Alright, hello everybody! Welcome to Light Matter Any Percent! Um... I'd like to introduce ourselves to Osmorn. Osmorn? Yes! Hi everyone, I'm Osmorn. And today is a very... I've run Light Matter for marathons many, many times. And it's one of my favorite games, I always love to come back to it. It's the reason why I got into speedrunning. But today, specifically, is a very, very special edition of Light Matter, any percent, no major glitches, because in this game, there are two characters, Virgil and Ellen, and we have the voice actors for both of them here on the couch with us today, so if you guys wouldn't mind introducing yourselves, please. Go, Natalie. <laughs> Hi, my name's Natalie, and I voice the role of Ellen. Uh, David? Thank you, Natalie. <laughs> yep, it's me, the Mad Professor. Um, David Bateson. Hello there. I just want to say this game, I nearly bust a blood vessel uh, recording it because I shout so much when I get really psychotic towards the end that I, I in one of the recording sessions, I nearly passed out. <laughs> so, <laughs> you're going to get value for money here and stand well back from your speakers because uh, uh, it gets pretty hectic towards the end. That's great. <laughs> Um, and for, for, for the people out there that haven't actually played Light Matter or aren't familiar with this game, um, what other games um, do we know you guys from? Um, well, uh, I'll go first then. Um, Hitman. I'm, uh, I'm Agent 47. Mm -hmm. And have been Agent 47 for 21 years, which is a ridiculous time. But um, yeah. Agent 47 and IO Interactive's Hitman, uh, based out of Copenhagen, Denmark. So, yeah. And what about you, Natalie? Um, Genshin Impact. I voice Sakya. She's a uh, forest in one of the towns that are that is more accessible kind of later in the game if you've played it for a while. And Rigid Force Redux. I voice Sai. She's like the onboard AI. And I also do like um, a lot of toys. So that's probably my main focus. <laughs> oh, really? All right, yeah. So as you can see here, they, these are pretty, pretty, really talented voice actors in this game and also in like the gaming world in general, uh, working on like popular games like Hitman and um, Genshin Impact. But um, we're going to be running um, Light Matter today with them. They worked on this game. And unfortunately, a lot of the time we're going to kind of be skipping past the stuff that they say <laughs> but <Yeah. laughs> for the sake of finishing the game fast but we're gonna we're gonna I'm, i have some stuff that i want to like discuss with you guys based on you know your experiences with this game along with you know showing you guys the speedrun itself um but first we do need to turn on speedrun stats in case we pb we won't but like we could um and we also need to turn down developer commentary because i get distracted by it but the first thing that we need to do is, you know, start. And we're gonna start at the level selection screen. So whoever is controlling the timer at the moment, yeah, you can do Whoa. it in three, two, one, let's go. So, Light Matter, the basic premise behind Light Matter as Virgil puts it is, it's like the floor is lava, except with shadows that eat organic material. Um, any of the shadows in this game can and will kill you with no exceptions, um, except for the first two levels, because there is no shadows in the first two levels. Um, meant to supposed to be like a tutorial um, section for the game. Uh, and so the main mechanics that we're going to be seeing here is just me pressing buttons, jumping across the screen, um, stuff like that. And we're going to be jumping upstairs, because when you walk upstairs, uh, your speed slowly decreases. Um, but the first thing that I kind of want to um, talk about with uh, Natalie and David here is just like what really attracted you guys to Light Matter and to working on this project back in, I believe, the production was in 2019, but it released in 2020. You go. David? Yeah. Oh, okay. oh, oh, yeah. Um, oh, back when uh, it was called, I think it was called See You on the Other Side, I saw like trailers for it trending on social media. Uh, I, d I knew it was a game, and this was actually the first game that I voiced that was released. So I contacted the developers, and this was about a, like a year before I actually started working on it, and I just said, hey, I love your game. This is the kind of stuff I love to play. 
Uh, I can't wait to see what happens with it. I can't wait to see it release. If you ever are looking for other voices for any other characters, please let me know. I'd love the chance to audition for this. And I didn't hear back from them from them for a while. And then one day I got an email from a company called Tunnel Vision Games and they were talking about a game called Light Matter. And at first I didn't understand what they were talking about. And then I clicked on the link they sent me and it was this game. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. So they sent me like a bunch of scripts to audition for. And I auditioned and here we are. <laughs> nice. What about you, David? What attracted you to Light Matter? Well, I just want to say, Natalie, way to go for being so proactive, by the way. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, obviously, it paid off. And um, yeah, uh, look, well, uh, you know, I live in Denmark, and uh, these guys knew of me because uh, of the, the IO Interactive franchise Hitman. And um, so they thought it would be like a no brainer to get me on board because it was the free publicity. No. <laughs> but, um, um, and, I'm, and, and I hope that made a difference. But I was just hooked by, as I mentioned in the, in the prelude, uh, I was hooked by the idea of, of darkness because that just, you know, I went, oh, okay, that's good. And then I will say this much. They sent me a, a sample of the script and that I was, then I was just totally and utterly hooked. One of the best scripts I've had the pleasure of reading. And I actually, I, I phoned them and said, listen, guys, um, did you write this? Because it's very, very good. Um, and they went, yeah, we did, every word. And I knew, I found out afterwards, they had a big history with the, this game uh, in their college days. This is a project that has matured over years. Um, so they were very close to it and understood every aspect about it. So the script, you know, was very mature and it was just stunning. So I, I kind of was fighting to do it, basically, yeah. in the end. It was, I didn't have to be convinced. Great script. Nice. And, you know, as we were talking there, we actually got introduced to the character, character of Virgil, who is this, like, corrupt CEO um, yeah. of Light Matter. And basically, he's trying to rub us off as if, as if he's, like, doing stuff for the greater good. But in reality, what he's doing is harming and killing many people in the process of, you know, trying to make Light Matter Industries into this big, huge corporation. Um, but as yeah. you can see, we are in this, like, um, in this abandoned abandoned site and there was this uh, weird explosion and from here on out at level three onwards we're going to see that all of the shadows can and will kill you in this game um with particular exceptions that are mainly just bugs in like the coding that we are going to take advantage of um oh, but I yeah i like to wait here a bit all right there we go um but Right here, we're gonna get the first little skip of the run um, in order to do something just completely, uh, just just to skip an entire puzzle, do something completely unintended. What we're gonna do is we're gonna walk across this bridge underneath here, and this button on the other side controls the top bridge. We're gonna press it three times so that there's a bit of a buffer on the top bridge, and we can actually get to the other side of the bottom bridge before the top bridge covers it and kills us. Um, and it's... So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so it's cheating, 100%. <laughs> uh, what, what we're gonna... And speaking of which, um, we don't know if there's a puzzle here in, f in level 5, because we just do that. Um, we just jump across, and we don't even know the, what, the, what the puzzle is anymore. I don't know what the puzzle is anymore. Um... But speaking of um, speaking of of, uh, of this puzzles, uh, we have a cycle based puzzle here, and we get the introduction to lamps. And as Virgil describes it, they are heavy and clunky, so we cannot jump with lamps in our hands. Um, but while I'm here, and now hopefully we can get the fast cycle. Um, uh, what exactly was your favorite part about like working on Light Matter um, for the two of you? Um, Natalie, you can go first. Uh, for me, it was a big welcome challenge because it was actually the first game that I was in of this caliber, and that was launching soon. Uh, I had just finished training and had just gotten my demo, and I just was, I know of so many people who have worked for years and years, and it's hard, and I just was so lucky to have this right off the bat, and it was such a challenge, and it immediately like stretched me as a voice actor. Uh, I was 
probably the, the most exciting thing about it. I learned so much, and especially working with such a nice team, it was, even though it was challenging, it was a smooth ride because everybody involved in this project is just so cool and so nice. <laughs> nice. What about you, David? Well, um, you know, what I like, it's, I, what I like for me is uh, for the character of uh, <laughs> this crazy guy, uh, Virgil, is that he's so um, unpredictable. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I was fascinated by that because there was no, you know, two sessions that were were similar because uh, he really, you know, messes with the the, the player head by being you know, one minute deeply suspicious another minute he's your friend and then he thinks you're part of the press and then he hates you and uh, <laughs> and then he gets you know really menacing quite evil and then and then when you find out about uh, in, in what he's saying about um, his ex colleague who invented the game and and, and you, you, you realize that he's just he's deeply unpleasant but um, he has ability to be kind of charming and fun, and so it was just a variety of stuff. It's, it's very rare. I'm sure Natalie will say this as well that um, you get to play a character in a, in a computer game, which is so different. You know, you're normally on one track, and uh, you've got your lines and you've got your throwaways, and but you're you're kind of locked into the same sort of uh, emotional territory. So it was just great fun having to mix it up. Yeah, and overall, like a lot of the stuff that um, that Virgil says and like does in this in this run has kind of become a bit of a meme because Virgil, like Virgil, acts like you're gonna get saved at least like three times in this run, and then something happens yeah. and you don't get saved. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then you know, I just love the fact. I love his sarcasm. He's just gonna. And I did actually ask them at one point. I said, "I don't think any everyone's going to get this because uh, you know he's, he says things to you oh, which are really rude, but other times he's saying things that are going, oh, well done,' you know. And you're thinking, oh, does he mean well done? No, he doesn't. You know, <laughs> he means the opposite of well done. You know, so he, there's a lot of kind of very dark humor uh, in the way he expresses himself." Mm-hmm. Pretty advanced stuff. You know, it's quite demanding on the audience. Okay. Yeah, it's it, both of the characters that you guys play come off like it's so well, especially like the contrast between the two characters. Because you know Virgil yeah. is just constantly trying to you know deceive you and get what he wants. Meanwhile, Ellen, on the other hand, is like <laughs> the voice of reason, trying to uncover everything yes. that Light Matter is trying to do, trying to harm people. The, with. the nice person, mm-hmm. yeah, exactly. Aww. Nice. Way to go, <laughs> Yay. Oh, yeah. And, like, what was it kind of like starting out when you were, like, fleshing out the character and um, trying to fit yourselves into the story, fit your, like, style of acting into the story? Um, um, yeah, you go first. Um, I felt like it was this... For Ellen, she had a smaller role and... I loved that she was such a contrast from David's character. Yeah. And I had listened, they sent me a lot of his stuff. I had listened to his lot of, a lot of his lines. So I pretty much, I think I, it was easy for me to kind of fall into being for her because I got so much out of David's performance and what he gave me so much to work with that uh, <laughs> it was pretty easy for me to just kind of jump in and just, like, I, I did a lot of, did a lot of different takes we tested stuff out a lot every time i would read a script they'd be like this is awesome but now that we hear your voice doing this i want to change this line because i think this would be really cool if you said it this way but we did a lot of experimenting and that made it even more fun for me <laughs> yeah, that's really good. yeah natalie may i may i ask you something just um yeah. when when recording obviously you're you're based out of uh, uh, new jersey um yeah. were you having to deal with a much of a time difference or was it do they work around you? Um, I think in this specific instance, no, because um, pretty much what I would do is I would re- they, I'd wake up every morning and I'd see emails from them with new scripts. And okay. I'd just get in the booth and record and then email them back. And usually I'm 
usually like I was able to give them everything they needed and then the next morning they'd have either revisions or they would add lines that they wanted to just t play around with or they would yeah. have the next batch of lines. So in this instance, no, but like in live sessions, especially because so many amazing game studios are in so many parts of the world, that is yeah. definitely something that you just kind of, like I, sometimes I'm up late, sometimes I got to drink a lot of coffee, which is also, you're not supposed to do for your throat, but <laughs> maybe take a, yeah, eat a coffee bean or something. <laughs> Oh, speaking uh, of Ellen, um, here we get introduced to Ellen. Everyone say hi. Um, so uh, now that we're on that like subject of now that we're being introduced to Ellen in the game, I do yeah. want to go um, into specifics about the character. Like, what does Ellen mean to you personally, Natalie? She so much reminded me of like. The typical female protagonist that you would kind of find halfway through the game, like the voice of reason. I mean, I don't know if that sounds weird to say, but I feel like <laughs> in a lot of these narrative-driven games, there's always like some kind of voice of reason, and uh, they were always like someone that I liked. I got excited when that character came up, so to get to play her was super exciting. Um, I liked that she was a scientist. Well, she was an employee, <clears throat> and she was smart. Uh, that was kind of fun to do. I like voicing smart females because, you know, representation <laughs> yeah. matters. Yeah. But yeah. That, that was, it meant a lot to me. It was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, that's, uh, it's, it's nice to, like, hear Ellen, especially when you're playing casually, um, because of just, like, because of just how much she is, like, a breath of fresh air in comparison to Virgil, who is consistently sarcastic and stuff like that. Like, you immediately trust, um, immediately trust Ellen the moment that you, like, meet her for the first time. And yeah. to And to have her, like, with you in, in specific areas of the game, take, giving, giving kind of, like, a break from Virgil's um, sarcasm, as great as it is, it's, um, from a storytelling perspective, it's a completely necessary thing to have in order to, like, build drama and, like, like move the story forward, if anything. Yeah, I, 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 I liked hearing your voice, Natalie, because it may it sort of ca was calming. Uh, and as you said, no, no, really, it was. Yeah, apart from the fact you have a fabulous voice, but I mean, <laughs> you, it was very reassuring. It was, um, as you say, the, the voice of reason. And when you've had, you know, quite a bit of Virgil shouting in your ear <laughs> in various states of psychotic sort of, uh, you know, paranoia. Um, it was actually, yeah, refreshing and uh, reassuring to hear your voice. So you, that's nice to know. <laughs> it's also, oh, it's you. great to listen to. So, yeah, I found that. Thank so, you. If, if I might intrude, uh, we have a $20 donation from Zephyr. Good luck with the run, Oz. It's been awesome to see how much you and the other Light Matter speedrunners have improved since the game release. Always a pleasure, pleasure to watch, and what an incredible pair of light matter experts that you have brought with you this time. Yes, thanks, shout out to Zephyr. He's one of the um, um, main uh, Discord moderators for the light matter, uh, for cool, the light matter Discord. It's absolutely amazing. Um, speaking of which, shout outs to the devs because I know that they have a watch party going on right now. Um, hello, how I hope I hope you're all doing well and enjoying this run. Again, it's a, it's just. An incredibly surreal experience to have um, both Natalie and David here with us uh, because you know I've been playing this game for over a year and never did I think that I would like be in this position where I could just to talk to both people that worked on this game. It's absolutely amazing. Oh, cool! So, so um, now that we're kind of like in now that we're kind of like being reintroduced to like Virgil, we had we had a bit of a break uh, with uh, from Virgil with uh, with Ellen. But like now that we're back with Virgil, um, what exactly does uh, Virgil mean to you, David? Well, um, what I well, what does he means to me? Um, there are, I have to say, sadly, even I'm a pretty level-headed person. There's a there's there's some reactions he has which remind me of me. <laughs> not, that I, not that I'm a psychotic, you know, crazy person, but. Um, I, I'm, I think I'm quite hard on myself, and if something I'm doing is going wrong, or I'm not living up to my own expectations, I can I can be quite 
hard on myself, you know. I kind of go, ah, oh, David, you asshole. Come on, get your shit together. You know, oh, oh. Yeah, I remember, I never forget this. I watched Daniel Craig in one of the Bond films, and something really bad is happening to him. Or is, uh, I think it was like a building was falling down on him, and he's running away from it. But just before he turns to run away, he just goes, oh, great. <laughs> like, you know, like the most... It's a bit like the guy in uh, Independence Day who right, spends all the time trying to get to see his mom, get you know, rescue his mom from from Brooklyn or something. And just when the whole of Manhattan explodes and he's in the traffic jam, and he sees all the cars flying up in the air coming towards him, he knows that he just goes, "Oh shit!" <laughs> um, I, I'm afraid I'm a little bit like that uh, in the sense that you know I can be like sarcastically hard on myself if, if I'm letting myself down and so some of the lines in Virgil you know I saw oh shit that's me uh, not all the shouting and, and being cruel stuff because I hope I'm not like that but it, th so yeah there were there were sh worryingly some lines that I went yeah I'd probably say that yeah that's yeah I would you know damn um, I'm not is paranoid. I'm not paranoid at all. In fact, uh, you know about who is the player and what's the player's intentions. That that was just fun acting, um, mm -hmm. and, and Natalie will know that. You know, being an actress, just it's great to have that mental exercise. You know, so I, I had a blast I'm from from the first recording to the last session. But I will say, as I say, towards the end of one of the last sessions where we do pickups. And then, uh, and then record some new stuff. Uh, <laughs> I literally, I kind of saw stars before my eyes. Went, Guys, I, I got to sit down. I don't feel very well because uh, I kind of, made, you know, blew a blood vessel. Because um, I, I don't know how to, I don't know how to hold back. So. I mean, it's a very emotional performance at the very end. When Rachel is like. <laughs> threatening you and trying to bring up all of these different ways to, that you're going to die while you're trying to escape. It's, yeah. you know, it's an incredible. It's a emotional. stress factor as well for the player, which, you know, which I was very aware of, you know, that mm -hmm. the closer the player was getting to you know, the end, the, the, they got to up the ante in terms of the, the stress level, you know, just to kind of freak yeah. them out. But, um, but, then yeah. you have, but then you have Ellen to like cancel it out. Calm, I mean, that's know. what I'm saying. That was the great relief, you know. Harry Ellen's voice came. Now, yeah, now listen up. I'm the, you know, I'm a, um, a, you know, professor. I'm a trained person. I know what I'm doing. Listen to me. Mm -hmm. and, um, so that that was a, re and I think you know what, looking back on the game, I, I think it's actually quite important to have a voice like um, Ellen, the Ellen character, just to come up with the audience t or the player. A time to just, you know, breathe deeply. Because if you had Virgil shouting in your ear from start to end, it would be madness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a nice balance between the two characters. And yeah. I, I, I wanted to point out something that you said earlier. You said, like, once you read the script, you were, like, yeah. in love with this project and that you wanted to be working on it. Totally. Like, is there any specific part of the script that popped out to you and made you think, yes, this is something that I want to work on? Um, yeah, well, the scene they sent to me was one of the first scenes, mm -hmm. um, which is, if you like, um, if you, you could call it the most, one of the more normal scenes, where you quite, you don't really know how, how, how weird he is. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's very kind of super subtly written. And I just picked up on that straight away. I went, whoa, this is a bit kind of like highbrow, if you know what I mean. Um, are you going to use this stuff all the way through? And they went, yep. Uh, so, and, I, and I like that. In this, for me, if I dare to make the, 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 um, the comparison, with the Hitman game, what totally intrigued me by it was that it was, uh, it didn't dumb down. It wasn't just a kind of, you know, brain dead first person shooter. Can use that expression. You know, it had a an element of going, well, you're gonna you hit your game if you want to get through this because uh, we're not gonna let you off the hook by giving you some easy clues. And this game has that feeling to it. Um, 
you know, I'm watching you doing what you're doing now. I'm absolutely blown away that you're doing it so quickly. <laughs> it's so depressing. <laughs> yeah. And I'm speaking of which, um, we actually did a thing there where I turned on developer because Virgil has a line there and that door will not open until the line um, ends. And I actually turned on developer commentary so that Virgil gets interrupted. And so the door will just open automatically. <laughs> so, like, it's very nice to have both of you guys here and because, like, we... While we do have like the voice lines playing on in the background, we don't really get a chance to like pay attention to the voices, you know, and get a detail about no, it. No, no, not a speed run. Yeah, exactly. Also, we have um, a beam of light so magnificent as Virgil describes it. We have the photon crystals. These are not like lamps, um, but they are. Um, they they're much better because they will just immediately produce infinite sources of light as long as it's within uh, within distance of a mother source. And so we're going to be using that throughout the uh, the run in order to skip certain parts and really push the limits as to how far we can push these uh, these uh, beams of light in in the game, as you can see here. But, that makes the speed run real quick. Yeah, it does because we kind of like push the we like as you can see when a, when a um when when a photon crystal is about to break, when the light between two photon crystals is about to break, it turns red. And we yeah. push the limits, like right here is a very good example of us pushing the limit of just to how much we can do with it, or how much we're willing to pull it, like like that. And Whoa. then, but we, when we bring this one over here, if we brought it just far enough so that when we bring this orb over here, it makes, it just barely hits the light. So we can bring Whoa. it across here. And then... Natalie, could you play this game? Yes, I did. At first, I played the demo because I'm terrible at platformers. I love gaming, but platformers are, like, the one thing I'm so bad at. <laughs> so, like, I purchased it. I was just afraid to play it because I didn't want to humiliate myself, even though I was just, it was just me and my cat. And I still humiliated yeah. myself, but I eventually got through it. <laughs> no, you're dead. Yes, that's weird. I, sometimes, I feel like there should have been light there. But you know what? We're going to see it go again. Uh, but one thing that I was going to actually ask you guys just now, like after we were done talking about um, like the script specifically, is just like what place in your lives is like video games? Th does video games have for for you two? Because a lot of obviously, like everyone here knows you guys. What is going on? Why isn't there light here? <laughs> what? Oh! Oh no! <laughs> I have. Why, okay, why I'm, I'm broken up. Come yeah. on, try a little harder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh um, but yeah, like what what place does video games have in like your lives? Because a lot of people obviously here know you from you know you guys from like different games like Genshin Impact and Hitman. But like how how do how do like video games overall affect you guys personally? Oh, you go um, for it, Adeline. I would well. I've played video games all my life. Uh, my brother, as soon as I learned how to like talk and walk, he like he played Ocarina of Time in front of me, which was oh. like my first. I think I, I if I remember that was like the first game I ever like actually played, and I immediately just became obsessed with Legend of Zelda. And at the time, I was like Disney princesses, so I just wanted to see him save the princess. I didn't understand that there was an entire game to go through. But then as I got older, I became a tomboy, so princesses didn't mean anything, I just wanted to play the game. Um, and then, like, when I went to school, I actually, I have a hearing problem, I'm deaf in one ear. So I had a lot of bullying issues, like, I got bullied a lot, and I think video games were my way of coping. So, like, hanging out with my brother and his friends and annoying them, and being the annoying little sister who wants to play games with them. I, I, I just kind of became, gaming for me, it was comforting, it was fun, it was my hobby, and then it eventually wow. became what I did for a living, so that's really cool. <laughs> yeah, who's laughing now? <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> Way to go. Yeah. I, I'm, for me, I, I'm, um, I'm a member of uh, BAFTA Games. Uh, um, I have a you know, membership. Of, so every, every year I get to look at the games uh, and vote on them you know, for the BAFTA Games Awards. Which are actually coming out, mm -hmm. and that that just blows my mind, um, and it reminded me of a a TED talk by the late great Sir Kenneth Robinson, who who was a Cambridge professor, educationalist guy, and and he his 
is te- you know, the, uh, well, let's just say what I'm going to say. He, he talks about the fact that uh, education is, um, teaches people out of their creativity because there's so much at stake now uh, in formal education. You can't, you, you're not allowed to fail. Mm-hmm. So therefore, you're not allowed to kind of play, and uh, and you you kind of you're taught out of your creativity, which we've all got as kids. You know, when you're picking, we're running around with a stick in your hand, going, "This is my lightsaber," um, mm-hmm. or my you know my horse, uh, and and you have no issue with that when you're you know, seven, ten years old or whatever, and then all that starts to go away, and you're becoming you know a, <laughs> you end up being a boring adult. But what I'm saying is um, that intrigued me, that TED talk, because he was saying, continue to play, use your imagination and make mistakes, you know, die getting through levels and go it, do it again and find another way around. Keep, your, keep going. And so when I watch these games every year, um, I'm just blown away at the level of creativity and that sort of fantasy world that, that we're allowed to, to you know, indulge so no, I'm not a great gamer but I am utterly utterly uh, hooked on the gaming industry and what it what it can do with your imagination you know so um, uh, and I can't believe what it's done in the years that I've been attached to to the industry you know mm-hmm. yeah so yeah just keep doing it <laughs> keep playing <laughs> yeah I mean like that's it's it's amazing to see because you know I I feel like I definitely hold video games much more into like an artistic value than um, a lot of other people would, um, especially when you know first-person like online yeah. shooters are like all the rage, you know. Um, but with that being well, you know, with that being said, like it's it's very very impressive the way that you said the very very creative ways that people create these games and go through um trying to interact with the, with the players and just overall coming up with like new concepts or at the very least not new concepts a new way of executing them for example yeah. i've personally never seen like the idea of oh the shadows will kill you maybe like yeah a lot of people have thought about that before but like the way that light matter executes it is just yeah beautiful like i love this game so much casually and i loved it as a speedrun as well and it's just so much fun yeah. to come back to every single time and it kind of reminds me of why i got into speedrunning and why i like games you know how long have you played games then i've played games since i was like five <laughs> whoa like uh like wow. five or four like i remember like i'm 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 a very young person so i like i remember my first game was just like for the gamecube or at least for the like the wii since i could like remember yeah. things um yeah yeah so like it was video games have pretty much always been a part of my life and to be able to bring it to the level that we have today to where i'm like speed running a game for a marathon um um, raising money for charity while talking to two of the voice actors in the game that's like something that if you told my five-year-old self that i was going to do i wouldn't I, like he wouldn't believe you you know yeah. in any way shape or form then again my five-year-old self didn't comprehend anything so <laughs> hey so you one day you'll have kids and then they will be proud of you yeah uh, i'm sorry soaring sloth what were you saying yeah, it's all good. It's all good. Uh, we do have a fifty dollars donation from Tunnel Vision Games. Uh, oh, thanks for setting this up and supporting a good cause. Shout out to David and Natalie for joining the run. All the best from the Light Matter Dev team. Yeah. Hey, hey, hi, you guys. <laughs> yes, shout out to we're the Light Matter here. Team. We're here. <laughs> uh, shout out to them for making such an amazing game. Like it's just yeah, oh, real. incredible it's people, really. And I mean that from the bottom of. Um, love to see them. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you have to see them, yeah. Yeah, no, really. I mean, I, as I say, I missed out on the uh, the launch of the game because I, I I just had another commitment. I think I was filming something, but um, uh, I just kind of wanted to hang out and say, oh, oh no, are we done? Are you sure? Can we do some more? You know. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, really, because it, it, it's just it was it was playing at a, at a very intense level, uh, you know, recording it, you know, and then doing pickups, and then and then the other thing was um, being stopped and saying, 
mm, no, could you could you try it like this? Because and I'm going, shit, I never thought of that. You know that they were constant. They knew this the material so well that they were ahead of me. They knew how they wanted it to sound. Sometimes, you know, the the exact sentences, um, uh, which made a big difference. Actually, you know, instead of saying something on occasion with a sarcastic voice, why not say it? No, they thought of mm, say it with a kind of the opposite emotion. Just say it really light and uh, like you really mean. Good thing, and I'd be going. Damn, I didn't. That is a brilliant idea. Um, so, as an as a an experience in front of a microphone, being directed, it, it was a it was a you know twelve course dinner. Indeed. Yeah. Yummy. Yes. And uh, Natalie, um, I for I we were talking about like what part of the script kind of popped out to you and made you say yes i want to work on this project um did you have a moment like that when you were like starting off um like reading for this game and starting off working for this game um was there a moment in the script that you saw that you were like yes i want to work on this and they got you hooked um the very first thing they sent me to audition for like i knew it was just a really well written script He's, the writing, I th I'm sure, I think David touched on this, but the writing is so awesome. And the very first yeah. thing they sent me to audition was like her first monologue. And I immediately knew, I was like, yeah, this is awesome. So I immediately yeah. wanted to work on it, but I think my favorite, at least Ellen part, was her, her very last monologue. Uh, she goes from this sweet, kind of soft-spoken, nervous, but oh, yeah. Yeah. confident and intelligent young woman to much more like she turns into something else very confident aware of what's going on and very yeah. serious and it was really fun to like have that switch like her last monologue and she was kind of contrasting uh david's maniacal yelling which was a ton of fun <laughs> <laughs> so uh, i think that was my favorite part uh, that's the thing that told me like this is gonna be such a badass game <laughs> yeah <laughs> just wanted to say as well tunnel vision games have so generously supplied supplied us with 15 game codes as part of the giveaway eligible to mm -hmm. all donators they've also generously supplied 35 game codes for our future events thank you so yeah. much tunnel vision games you're all so amazing yes um oh yeah speaking of which i'm like i emailed gustav who is uh, one of the devs for this game? And I was just like, "Oh, would you care to like give us um, some game codes so we can have it as prizes for people that donate?" And he and we expected like five. He offered us fifty game codes, and <laughs> so we're going to be using fifteen for this event, and we're going to be using the other thirty-five for you know the rest of the events that we have this year. So that's absolutely amazing. Thank you so much to the develop to, to, to Tunnel Vision Games for doing that. It's really great. Um, but, but yeah, um, Natalie, is there kind of like part of yourself that you see in Ellen or that you put into the character of Ellen? Um, I think, I think that I'm kind of a shy person and sometimes I can be a little unsure and in her first couple monologues, at least like her first couple scenes, I think she came across as that. Uh, she was nervous, she didn't want to directly stand up to Virgil, but she knew there was something bad going on and she was trying to do something about it. And I, I guess that's why it was so easy for me to immediately say like, yeah, this is fun and I want to work on this, because I just totally related to her shyness and her nervousness and uh, yeah. it was it was kind of therapeutic. <laughs> yeah, and... Um... And I suppose, Natalie. David, you did touch on that, didn't you? Like, you saw a bit of yourself in what Virgil was saying and what Virgil was doing, right? Yeah, you know, just being hard on myself in a sarcastic way mm -hmm. if things are not going right for myself, which is totally wrong to do that. Um, I could I could use that directly in, in the way he would say some lines with this, you know, heavy sarcasm with kind of a dark humor, which is not actually very at all funny. I said, what is that? What's that about? What is that saying about sarcasm? Is the sarcasm is poor man's wit or something? You know, it's like it's it's not good. <laughs> um, but uh, I could use that. I, I'm, can I ask Natalie a, a question here? Um, Natalie, you say you you're deaf in one ear, and that that gave you some stick at, at school. Oh like, yeah, um... bullied and stuff. That was that must have been tough. 
Yeah, um, well, when I was born with a hearing problem, and at first I, like, I had hearing in both ears. It was partial hearing, so I wore hearing aids and everything. Okay. And I was just so tired of, like, getting made fun of it, fun of for it. Yeah. So when I got to high school, I just ripped them out and uh, lost the hearing aids. And I, was, and I told my mom, I don't want a new pair. I'm not doing this anymore. So I just wow. kind of got through high school being hard of hearing. And actually, I went for a hearing test, I think, my sophomore year of high school, and they said my hearing was getting better, which is actually crazy. Like, it's rare. It can happen, I guess. Uh, I yeah. stopped listening to loud music, so maybe that was part of it. And then, after I graduated high school, I was getting ready for Thanksgiving one morning, and yeah. I went. I just heard ringing in my left ear, and when it stopped, I was deaf. So I went deaf in my left ear. They never explained it. They don't know why it happened. So yeah, I think it was like, it has something to do with me being shy, the bullying, and the fact that sometimes when you can't hear people, you'd rather than make them repeat it over and over again, you get kind of, you just kind of, you feel bad and you get shy. So you just kind of get yeah. quiet. That's where the shyness maybe comes from. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, one, you know, all credit to you because, uh, oh, thank you. Of becoming, a, you know, an actress and, and being a voice actor. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, thank you. I, you know, but, but but here's the thing: you're able to use your talent and your background, uh, you know, as as someone who's experienced that kind of okay. I'd rather you know be shy and not sort of ask a question again. I'll just sort of you know be quiet and and or I'll just pretend I heard or I'll not. You that has led you to to what you do now for a living, which is kind of funky um yeah <laughs> whether you you know you'd wish that on on someone to to go through in order to become a you know a voice actor or an actor yeah. but um it's definitely been something you're it's, it's kind of honed your talent or you know it's tempered your the steel of your sword uh <laughs> to, to do what you do so hey full credit to you I didn't know oh thank you the people who made fun of you in school probably play Genshin Impact now and don't even know that you're one of the voice actors in it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who's laughing now? Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah, I hope that's so. Great. Um, and yeah. so right now during the story, we're kind of like reaching the climax. But this is the last level, by the way. Um, yeah. So, so right here we have Ellen interrupting us as Virgil leaves and telling us that we need to overload the core. And in order to save, uh, in order to save all of humanity from light matter, and you know, as we are wrapping up the game, we're going to hear the last of Ellen's lines. We're going to hear the last of Virgil's lines. So, like, what was it like wrapping up in the, wrapping up like the process of working on this game, and also like, how did it feel like after you were done? Well, it was like I said. I think before is. This was pro even though the game was amazing and I loved it and being part of this was so much fun. It was also a challenge, and like I said before, I know a lot of other voice actors that are about my age and have been doing this about the same amount of years as I have, and it's really hard to get that first job, and it happened so fast, completely by chance, because I had reached out at the right time and happened to see an ad for. Uh, light matter as I was scrolling through I think uh, Instagram <laughs> um, so when I wrapped it I, when I was wrapping uh, my very like I said my very first scene she kind of has a change of heart she gets very confident she realizes what's going on and what she has to do and that was so fun because I got to be confident and kind of be a badass and kind of save the day so it was a confidence boost <laughs> <laughs> and I think that was right around the time I was rapping. I sent that last script, and on Friday, I, I sent that last thing, and then I heard from them on Monday, we got everything we need, this was awesome, and I mean, that was the rap. And it was just, it was very surreal. It was tons of fun. I thanked them, like, over and over again. And uh, I just, I kept begging, when's the game coming out? When's the game coming out? When can I talk about it? So, yeah, it was just a whole lot of emotions. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. And what about what about for you, David? How was it like like wrapping wrapping this game up? And well, I have a photograph. I still have this photograph on my phone of about fifteen minutes, maybe half an hour after we were we went around the corner to a um, a square in uh, in Copenhagen. You know, like, kind of a piazza place. You know, with cafe bars and stuff. And I have this photograph of me with the 
the crew from uh, from from Tunnel Vision Games, and I just didn't want that day to end. You know, we were there just to have a drink and uh, oh, you're dead. Come yep. on. <laughs> well, luckily in this level, we actually respawn faster than you normally would in other levels. So it's not that much of a time loss. Thank goodness. Okay. Uh, but what, I, were, what I were you just, saying? I was just saying that that, that sort of selfie I took, um, I, don't, I didn't really do selfies, uh, but I, I, wa I didn't want it to end. And I'd had such a good time with these people. You know, we kind of felt like I'd gone through fire and brimstone, you know, for, for this game. And of course, as the voice actor comes in at the end, you know, these, these people have been developing this game for years. They've kind of, you know, it's just, they, they've done so much work and, and we come in and, and sort of steal some of the glory at the end, but I, I just didn't want it to, to come to an end. And, that, that, and therefore I said, can I just take a photograph of all of us? Uh, just to kind of capture the moment so I could go back and I still have that photograph on my phone. Nice. Um, so yeah, uh, we have a beer definitely waiting to be at some point. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's, that's a really nice story, you know, it's, uh, because with, with stuff like that, you know, you really don't want it to end. It was such a great experience. Um, I've had that kind of emotion with other like events in my life, especially when it comes to, you know, even speedrunning events like this because you know this is like what i'm passionate yeah. about you know i i don't want it to end when i'm having such a good time um and another thing that i wanted to talk about is that we're at the part of the game where you yell a lot at the character and yeah this is where i nearly passed out yeah um do you want to talk a bit more on that like and how were you how are you feeling about yourself and about virgil at this moment in the game well bear in mind this was that they saved this but for the last uh, uh, recording session because I would have no voice, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and it would be, you know, it was exhausting. Uh, and I just, I thought it would be wrong to try and hold back. I'm, I'm not good at holding him back, as I mentioned earlier. But, you know, you can uh, use your voice, and obviously in such a way that you don't have to really give it the whole you know, 400 decibels in them. But um, I uh, I just, when we got to this last, the last bit, when I knew we were heading into the home straight and there were no more pickups to do and there were no more, you know, dialogue sequences, and I just thought, right, I'm going to give it every single bit I've got. And, and I actually asked them, I said, uh, I don't know how, you're, how are your microphones picking this up? I can barely hear myself in the headphones. <laughs> That's because they, you know, they'd screwed, you know, take, turn down the uh, the inputs in my on the headphones. But they had, you know, I had to stand back from the microphone. But they'd made a lot of preparation for that because I, I really boom. Um, and and uh, I just yes gave it like it was like the last thing you were going to do in your life. Just wanted to go all out. Uh, and then it was some as I say, I saw these uh, sort of pink spots in my eyes and going, oh, something is happening. <laughs> oh, I feel a bit dizzy. Um, and I had to sit down and drink some water. So, no, no, it was just an um, experience from start to end um, with with people who, who really feel, feel passionately about what they're doing, you know. Mm -hmm. It was a no-brainer to do, to say yes to. I mean, I'm sure Natalie felt the same. Absolutely. Yeah. And speaking of which, Natalie, how did how did you feel about how did you feel about the project about yourself about about Ellen as a character once you realized hey you were wrapping up? Um, I I I guess I admired her because it's not I I, I imagine in a situation that she's in and where she's got a, a boss who's doing what Virgil's doing and she's in a workplace where all this is happening it's I imagine it's hard to speak up, especially if you're putting yourself in danger <laughs> at that point, yeah. I feel like she was. I imagine it's hard to do that, and I think she, uh, she was, I know, she had, she kind of took a back seat, but I do think that 
he was not really a hero, but she was definitely like the protagonist of the one of the protagonists of the story, along with uh, the player character, and I, along with James. I know. Yeah. James had a very important moment at one point in the game. We're actually going to see I it at the end, right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I didn't mean to spoil it. I'm sorry. No worries. <laughs> I mean, if it's a it's a speed run, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're spoiling yourself if you watch it. So. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but obviously, we won't go into too much detail at the end. Uh, but uh, but uh, yeah, like, how do you? And now that you're now that everything was said and done with, how do you view this project and everything about it in retrospect? Um, I know personally that. I mean, I'm sure, and David knows this too. Every I think everybody here knows this that game developers really put their blood, sweat, and tears into these games. Yeah. It is not easy, and it takes a long time. And for them to make a game of this caliber, this high quality, that's attracted this much attention, I was just so proud to be a teeny tiny little piece of that. And yeah. again, so freaking amazed that this was my first. Uh, project to be released. I worked on projects before this, but they were released after this game was released. And to be able to have this game be the first thing I talked about as someone who was getting paid to make vo to do voices and to <laughs> the characters was just it was such a proud moment. <laughs> mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, and I mean, David, how do you feel about it now? I'm very proud of it. Um, it's, it's rare I use that. Because again, I kind of get a bit shy, shy about saying, "Ooh, I'm proud of this," but um, yeah, you know, I I do voiceovers pretty much every day, uh, but not for games. Um, well, I hate to interrupt yeah. you here, but uh, we are yeah five, four, three, oh. two, one. That's time. We're done. That's Yay! the game. Hey! In game time says 47 minutes 53 seconds. What is my RTA sloth? If you know what I mean. 48, 15. 48 minutes 15 seconds. We'd love to see it. Um, that is like five <laughs> minutes <laughs> off world. That is like five minutes off world record. It's like 43 minutes oh and 13 gosh. seconds. Um, my PB is like a 40, 44 minutes 40 seconds. So that's, <laughs> that's, uh, that's good. But we had like four deaths in there. I don't know what was going on in level 20 at all. But uh, yeah. I don't, they look like a, I mean the one of them definitely looked like a glitch I mean, yeah exactly uh, I didn't see why it went black you know yeah um, lights came out but yeah. not that I know much about it because yeah. I could never play this game at this level <laughs> also uh, Osmond oh, just uh, let the credits roll as yeah. well so we can see the photo I don't know if it's right or not uh, yeah and uh, David you were saying something about like um, just how you how you worked on projects before? What were you saying? Well, no, it's just I mean, um, yeah, I, I do you know jobs every day, but um, very rarely will you get a chance involved in a project for such a long time, and uh, you know that that's, that gives it a different sort of emotional connection. You just kind of really want to. Be a part. It's like finish doing working on a film or a t TV series or something. But you know, you're together working very intensely with a group of people for a while, and then it comes to an end, and you you don't want it to come to an end if you've had a good time. Mm -hmm. um, and that that's like a really investment of of part of your life or bit of your time. You've really kind of committed to it, and therefore it it stays in my memory. I'm I'm kind of like. Um, feel quite precious about it, you know, uh, and and I want to keep that memory. That's why I took that photograph at the end, just to kind of, got you, I've got you in the frame. I'm going to try and bottle this memory picture. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. It's great fun. That's amazing. I'm so glad yeah. you guys, uh, like, love this project so much and you're on it with such, like, such pride because it's it this is a game that means so people much. there you go yeah it's it's, it's <laughs> just, this is a game that means so much to the people that play it to the people that have created it and it's but it means so much to me like i wouldn't be here without this game and like the community behind it and to again like i, I will say it time and time again like to be in this position where i'm talking to the two of you and we're playing a game that you guys have worked on it's something that i never 
imagined for myself that would happen. It's such yeah. a uh, such a crazy, crazy experience, and it really is. Um, but <laughs> is it? Is, I don't know if there's anything that like as the credits roll. Is there like anything that you guys want to say about the run? What we've seen today about light matters about a whole, or as yourself about yourselves? Hey, Natalie, I don't know about you, but I'd love to do two. No pressure, Tunnel Vision Games, but... <laughs> so I think you cut out for a second. I didn't yeah. hear what you said. I was just saying uh, uh, no pressure on Tunnel Vision Games, but I think they should make Light Matter 2. Oh my gosh, yes. No, no, no. <laughs> Full pressure. We're up for that. Full pressure, okay? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. No I mean, they're watching. They, they, got, the, they got the memo, so... <laughs> yeah. Okay. Balls in your court, guys. Feel the pressure. Yeah. We're available. Mm. Absolutely. God, that would be amazing. That would be absolutely great. Uh, Natalie, is there anything that you wanted to wanted to mention before we like head out? Uh, to everybody involved in the game, to you, Osborne, to David, uh, everybody else, GG. <laughs> <laughs> Good game. <laughs> cool. This is yeah. This is again. I every time that I every time that I come back to this game, it just reminds me. About is that the selfie that you're talking about? I there it is. There it is. That's my selfie. That's my selfie. <laughs> Beautiful. Hey. Oh my god, it's amazing. Hey, yes, yeah. that's the picture I got. Oh, cool, man. Every time that I come back to this game, it just reminds me of why I'm doing this and what I uh, what I what I look forward to when it comes to playing video games and speedrunning. And without without it, I wouldn't be here today. So it's absolutely amazing. Uh, but can I ask you, um, how does this work? I mean, is this uh, a one-off event for this game, or is it out there now so people can see it? Or can oh we... no, that, yeah, we're gonna be recording this. Like, we, this is recording and we're gonna put it up on our YouTube, and um, cool. it's gonna be it's gonna be there for people to see for the rest of time. But uh, it's 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 a, it's a very wonderful wonderful thing. Because uh, well, I'd, I'd love to promote it in as much as you guys. So just to kind of go, hey, this was fun. Um, see it. But mm -hmm. will, will I will I get a link? For, can I? Oh yeah, you... yeah. Um, I'm actually gonna be yeah. yeah. I'm gonna be the one probably highlighting all of the different runs and uploading them to YouTube. So we're, you're definitely gonna get that for sure. Cool. Be I will one. send you both an email with the link. Oh, cool, man. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Wonderful. But uh, um, yeah, I think. Well, how do you, yeah. I'm just curious. How do you make a donation? Um, uh, Soaring Soft can answer that question perfectly. How do you make a donation, Soaring Soft? Of course, um, there is a link directly below this Twitch page that you can directly do donate to our cause. Um, our cause is directly towards Haven House. Haven House Children Hospice cares for seriously ill babies and children up to the age of 18 by creating a lovely and warm environment for them and their families while they go through the toughest of times. No family should have to face alone the difficulties of looking after a child with a serious illness, although we cannot change their diagnosis. Our special cool. care team are here to provide support to, to parents and careers who have children with complex medical needs. So that's, can I get that on event details? Or where, where is that on the page? Um, I can send that to you on... Um, yeah, do that. Because you're just on, yeah, because you're just on the Discord. There is actually a Twitch where everybody else is. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah I sent you the link. Too. Okay. Cool. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. But cool. um, I think Excellent. I think there's only one way that we can um, exit this one out. I'm going to be back on Sunday. I'm going to be running another game called Anti Chamber, and it's much like a, it's it's the same like puzzle platformer esque kind of game. Um, if okay. you, if anyone in the chat wants to check that out, but um, yeah, I feel like there's only one way that we can properly um, outro this. So, how about on the count of three? We're all gonna say see you on the other side, and then we're gonna we're gonna head out. So, You're uh, up. all right, three. Nice to meet you. Okay, well, of course, nice to meet you too. So, three, two, one. See you on the other see side. You on the other side. <laughs>